So make sure ZAMP is running Apache and MySQL. Now let's continue. So last time we learned about sessions. So now what we're going to do is uh, use the session to actually log in a user. So let's go back to our folder here and let's drag in the login.php page. Okay, so we have our session start there. Now to keep everything organized, as you have noticed on every page, we need to include these classes. Now what happens is as time goes on, the number of classes we're going to create is going to increase, okay? So what we would do in future is to create one file that has all these classes in one place. So we're going to do that uh, in a later video, but for now, just to keep that in mind. So let's begin. So we have session start here, and then while accessing our uh, class, let me go back to classes and get the login class bring it back here and then we assign session user id to <coughs> excuse me to the record that we have uh, retrieved for the current user so now you may have several websites that you're working on on your local host now to avoid collisions make sure that the uh, variables that you add in your sessions start with the website name because you could have 10 websites where the user ID if you simply use user ID uh, they are all going to be assigning that value to the same variable in the same session so what will happen is you have 10 websites you are working on and you'll be logged in automatically in all of them that's not really a problem because it's on your own machine However, just to avoid collisions anywhere, it's better to put a prefix. Like for example, this is my book, underscore user ID. So that's much better. So say session, my book, user ID is equal to whatever we recovered in the row, okay? And so since the user is now successfully logged in, we can simply redirect the user somewhere else. And this is going to happen in the actual login page because uh, if there are no errors it's going to come here and redirect us so which is pretty cool but we'll still have this right there now all we need to do now is to check if the user is logged in and then we allow the access to uh, our user all right so let's test this theory right here let me go to uh, back here and get the profile because it's on the profile page that we have to know whether the user is actually logged in. So up here, let's create some PHP tags. Make sure you don't leave any spaces there. And let's close our PHP tag right there because there's HTML down here. So the only thing I want to do in here is to check what's in the session. So I'm going to say session start like so and then I'm going to simply print what's inside the session this is going to tell us if the user was actually logged in okay so if we don't see any values in here then the login was not successful all right so let's go back to our website and begin from there and one thing uh, that we haven't actually created so far in our website is the index page because we need a, a page called index or a page called home and we're going to do that later on but for now let's start with the sign up page okay so let's go to our sign up page and there we go now since we are seeing our php in there it means our server is not running so let's change that to localhost and there we go so everything is running so let's create a user we can actually relate to so I'm going to say um, so you can put any user in here of your choice that's up to you so let's choose one uh, email I'm going to use uh, whatever email all these sample emails I'm just going to say
All right, let me try that one. And let me, I'm going to add a password. Now the password is just going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Same here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let's hit the sign up button. So, so far it looks like we have everything under control. We've put in the required data. So we don't expect any errors to show up. So let me hit that button. And as predicted, we are taken to the login page. So now we have to log in with exactly the details that we used. So now intentionally, I'm going to try and uh, do something, create uh, a login that doesn't exist. So I'll do that and I'll put a password that doesn't exist and hit login so that we see if we get any errors or anything of that sort. So now, as you can see, nothing is actually happening. It's not even refreshing the page. Now, if you might have guessed what the problem is, it's because in our login page, where is this? If we scroll down here to where the uh, inputs are, we don't have a form here. So the, the submit button doesn't actually work because it only works when we have a form. So let's create that form and give it a, uh, a method to use. So to do that, we just type form, the angle bracket form like this. So this is the opening form and closing form tag. So we drop this one down. I want to bring this one down so that it covers all these. So I will move these ones with a tab key so that it's more visible what we are doing. So all this is now enclosed in a form. And then I have to specify the method because if I don't, it's going to use the get method, which is not exactly what I want. I want it to use the post method. Okay. So this is enough. That's all the info we need. Unless we want to send this to another page, which we don't, we would add the action and write other page or whatever that page is dot PHP then it's going to take that action to that page, but we don't need to do that in here. So we'll leave it be and hit the save button. So if I come back here and refresh the page and just type something, this time it's going to refresh. Okay, so now here we have issues that we need to solve. First of all, the following errors were occurred. No such email was found. Okay, that's good. However, let's look at these uh, errors one by one. So there's an error on line 11 on this page right here, login.php. So it says unidentified index email. Okay, so let's go and see where that problem is. Online login.php. Now we have to make sure that this login.php is in classes, right? So that we know it's the one inside classes. Okay, so line 11 is this one. So now it's telling me that this does not exist. Now, where is this data coming from? It's coming from here. Now, where is this coming from? It's coming from where we code this function from, which is back here on the actual login page right there. And what we passed in was the post variable. So it means this post variable doesn't have the memory location called email. Now, the reason it doesn't have that is because we didn't give it that thing. So let's go back to the login, uh, the one with the HTML and go down here on the form. Now, the reason those memory locations don't exist is because we haven't given any names to these inputs. So you need to give them names in order for the post array to get them. So let's do that just now. Let me put name like that. I'm going to name this one email because that's what we are already looking for. And then I'm going to name this one password because that's also what we're looking for. And that's all we need. So let's go back and give this another try. Let me refresh the page. Okay, something went wrong here because we are not supposed to see these values. So if I come back here, all right, I'm going to see that I added this here, which is not supposed to be there. Okay, that's the autocorrect for you. So let me refresh this page again. Okay, there we go, looks much neater. So let's try uh, an unused email address and the wrong password. So there we go, 
less errors now. Now it's saying an identified variable error on line 37. So this one is in classes, okay? So let's go to the class version on line 37. And there we go. So error is not a known object. Now, if you have guessed why error has not been recognized, it's because we said in every class, if you want to reference a property or because these are called properties, they are uh, uh, variables. So variables you add on top of the class here are called properties. The functions are called methods. So if you want to access anything, either a method or a property from within the class, you use the keyword this, okay? So you need to use this. So I'm going to say this here with an arrow like so. So that's exactly what I need to do to reference it here as well and reference it there as well. Okay. So the rest I think will still work because we are not referencing any other property here or any other function. So let me save that and let's go back and try again. So I'll hit login again and now everything is okay. So it's saying the following errors, no such email was found. So let's try now a correct email, but the wrong password. So let me log in. And then it says wrong password. So everything is working out very well so far. So let's try an actual password here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And let me hit the login button. And just like that, we are taken to our profile. And remember, we had told it to show us what the user ID is. So remember this test from a previous tutorial. It's still there. It's still saved because session saves information for quite a long time. And then there's another memory location called my book user ID, which we want. And it's equal to this one. So for as long as this user ID is set, we can know which user is logged in. Okay, so in the next video, we're going to look at how to use this user ID to actually get details for the user that we're going to populate right here and make our profile look awesome. All right, so I'll see you in the next video.